Welcome back. Today I am going to give you an introduction to the authorization. Um, this is part of the ongoing series on security and identity. We have already completed uh, configuring identity and about um, authentication and um, we have learned the about configuring cookies, sign in, password, tokens, etc. So I strongly encourage all of you to go into that series first before coming to the authorization. So what are our learning outcomes? So today's learning outcomes are that we shall ex examine what authorization in ASP.NET Core means and we shall list the authorization models and to be discussed specifically in the later tutorials. Okay, so let's so what a user can do is answered by the process of authorization. So what an authorization is? That is basically what we are trying to answer that question. So authorization is a, what a user can do and post authentication. And in authentication, we have seen authentication determines who a user is. So after the user is authenticated, that means, you know, physically or practically a user is able to log in to a web portal or a website or a web application then the process of authorization determines what that user logged in user can do okay so a user with administrative rights is allowed to create a document library it can edit add and delete documents whereas a non administrative user on the other hand is only authorized to read the documents and do nothing else. He is not able to do anything else like write, add the documents, edit or delete the documents. Okay. Although authorization is independent from authentication, it requires an authentication mechanism because you know uh, this first the user needs to be authenticated and then comes the um, role of authorization. So authorization types, so ASP.NET Core has two types of authorization models. First is a simple declarative role based and the second one is a rich policy based and authorization is expressed in requirements and handlers ev evaluate uh, a user's claim against requirements, so authorization handlers, you know mechanism which handles the authorization, it, they evaluate or it evaluates a users claim against requirements. So imperative checks can be based on simple policies or policies which evaluate both the user identity and properties of the resource that the user is attempting to access. So before leaving to recap what we have learned, but before leaving, I would like to tell that this is the microsoft.asp.net code authorization namespace has includes authorized attributes and allow anonymous attributes which we will see in the next lecture and as a recap so looking at the learning outcomes so we have already examined what an authorization in ASP.NET Core means and we have also listed the authorization models that is the uh, rich policy based model and simple um, role model